Okay, well, welcome to my service panel for the house. This is in the basement, and it's a square D, 200 amp uh, panel. And let me show you what's going on here. The house was built in 79, and according to the original wiring down here, this was the heat pump, 28 and 30. There was one heat pump for the house. Well, in 97, they moved that heat pump and they put in another one. Now I have two heat pumps. So now the 28 and 30 are unused. So that's really great. Here's that breaker. It's a 40 amp breaker, which is exactly what AeroVironment wants for their charger. So I'm really in luck. I have the breaker. I have the line. It's unused. All I have to do is cut it, pull it, and reroute it out into the garage and I'm golden. Completing uh, the electrical installation for the uh, charging system and uh, thank God for Squirty. Squirty is one of the top of the line service equipments. We're putting in the um, this is number four conductor to a 40 amp breaker. If I can get the thing in there. And then uh, that, that'll be it. It will be complete, ready to start charging the a little Nissan. Yeah. We were lucky. In this particular installation, we relocated an existing 40 amp circuit that was installed for a, um, a old air conditioning system that was abandoned. But the, the conductor is only, you know, a few years old, so we were able to reuse that for the charging system. Saves a lot of money, but it, not that much money. I mean, that's why we're doing the, the video, to take the mystery away from an installation like this so that people can understand what it, what's involved and uh, understand the costs associated with the, with the electric car installation. As my buddy Scott here said, this is the future of automotive technology. Yeah, and I was really fortunate that I could reuse my existing circuit. Let's test it out, make sure we have it. Right here. 240 volts, 40 amps. <laughs> Good as gold. Cool. And this is a square D panel, 200 amp service. Top of line, couldn't ask for any, any better. Um, just going to finish it up, Scotty, put, put the cover back on, put uh, our little sticker, Gary Electric Company. <laughs> right. We're going to put it on the panel. Good advertising. Yeah. And, um, yeah, then we'll go out to the garage, energize the, the charger on the, the wall. The charger, right. It'll, it'll do a self-diagnostic, and then we'll be good to go. In. There's nothing going out yet. We, we put the charging unit on. 240 volts going out. Cool. Into the charging unit, 240 volts. Yeah. Good to Get go. Lights. Good, and your lights are on. <laughs> we're, re we're ready to run the machine. Uh-huh. We're gonna go ahead and close it up, folks, and then uh, yeah. Scotty will take over and do my, my inaugural plug-in. It's an inaugural plug-in. For the, for the new gas station in my own garage. Yeah. This, this thing on the top, is we, we believe in reusing, you know, salvaging. This was part of the air conditioning circuit that, that we salvaged. But all equipment requires a service disconnect. That means when you're servicing the equipment, you're able to shut the power off of the charger. Safety devices, uh, safety as protection. Yeah, so you don't always have to turn it off at the exactly. breaker in the basement. and. The code says that it must be within line of sight. If your electric panel is in the garage, the circuit breaker on the panel can act as your service disconnect. If, if it's not within line of sight of the apparatus, you must have a, a physical service disconnect, and that's what we've just done. Yeah. We just put one in. Yeah. We've hooked it up, 
power's on, everything seems to be working. Yeah. What's interesting is the way this thing is wired, it's a 40 amp, 240 volt circuit. You know, you could you have a service disconnect, but if you had a plug here, the plug could act as a service disconnect. Theoretically, you could have a welder outlet. If some if some one of you out there has a welder outlet in your garage, you know, that could feed your power station. You just put a pigtail on the power station and you plug it into your welder outlet. You unplug your welder outlet when you, you know, the, the power station when you want to use your welder. Is that the same as a dryer outlet? Same as a dryer outlet. Yeah. Dryer outlet, norm, well, normally it's a, they do have 30 and 40 amp uh, dryer outlets. This is a 40 amp service. But you're right, if you have a 40 amp dryer outlet, theoretically you could plug your power station into that. Mm -hmm. Now, what people need to remember is the two fundamental, three fundamental concerns. Proper wire size, so because you do not want to, you know, overload the conductor. A large enough conductor to handle the whatever the the load is. In this case, it's uh, 40 amps, so we want at least number eight wire. We've got number four wire coming into it. It's it will handle even more than yeah. the 40 amps, but yeah. it's fused at 40. And secondly, and th well, and finally, you want to have it physically protected, the conductor, and mechanically secure. That means either stapled or strapped every two and a half feet physically protected means you want to ha either have it in you know up here is fine but if you're if you're four feet or below you want to have it sleeved in pipe you want to have uh, you know a what they call a running board that's just a two by four nailed next to the wire so that if anything hits it okay it's yeah. not gonna hit the wire it's gonna hit the wood yeah so now here's what I was using the car uh, trickle charger. I, I call it level one. I'm not. Don't have to use that anymore. So I'll unplug it under here, and this will go back in the trunk of the car to use it uh, on opportunity charging. Okay. So now the panel is set up to handle my uh, EVSE. So <clears throat> we reused the bottom breaker and it used to be unused and now it says garage electric car charger EVSE on, on the last two breakers, which happened to be a 40 amp breaker. So, so that was nice that I just had that sitting there waiting to be used. And now the cable goes up and turns to the left and then goes out to the garage that way. Okay, well here's the final result. Here's the car in the garage. So what one does, there, there's the, uh, the new um, appliance. <laughs> and so uh, what one does is one comes over and takes one's charger off the wall. And I just have the cable looped over the top. I think that's why they designed it like that, where it's beveled back. You just loop the cable over it, and it will automatically fall back on the wall. So that that looks like a good idea. I didn't hang the the other um, holder, cable holder. And then one comes over, opens one's charge port, one-handed, open that up, and have at it lights and then you hear a relay you hear a relay pop inside the charger and then it says um, vehicle charging now to stop so listen listen to the relay it makes that kind of click sound that's actually relay tripping inside and then you could uh, disconnect it okay so uh, let me do the, uh, the the diagnostic. You push start and stop at the same time. Hold it down for about three seconds, and it does that. That's the self test. Everything's working properly. And then I uh, there's the electrician's sticker. Carry electric. Recommended if you live in uh, Montgomery County. <laughs> An experienced EV SE uh, electrician installer. And then. Uh, Good old, good old sign. Uh, I might hang that outside. I don't know. Um, but one thing I am going to do is put a hole in the wall. I'm going to put in kind of like a doggy door, 
and then you could reach in from outside because outside is the other uh, parking spot and uh, that way you could reach in and and uh, grab it um, grab the the connector and then charge your car from out in the driveway and then I could put that on plug share and I could be a level two charging station on plug share at least until it gets real busy okay well anyhow so that's what uh, what uh, the the new gas station is so have fun come and join me and so as I'm fond of saying to my friends this is what the end of gasoline looks like not the end of oil we're still gonna need petrochemicals but the end of gasoline uh, I think we're we're starting off on that on that road